Welcome to today's episode. I haven't quite decided on a title yet, so I'm not telling you what the title is because I don't know. But I do want to talk today about one of my Sunday school lessons. This was from February 5th, and for those of you who didn't know, I am a Sunday school teacher. I was asked to be a Sunday school teacher last year. I think it was around September It might have been October, honestly. I don't remember exactly, but I was asked to be a Sunday school teacher, and I've been doing it since then. I've actually only taught three times. I don't know if I just kind of got out of it, or if there was just a lot of breaks, or whatever was the case, but I've only taught three times, and the most recent times were back-to-back. So I taught February 5th, and then I taught February 12th, I think is right. I'm going to go with it. February 12th. The reason I taught two weeks in a row, besides Relief Society and Elder Squirm in between, so Sunday school, then I had a week off, and then I taught again, was because both teachers the second week were out of town. So (laughs) I was like, great, I guess that leaves me. That being said, it turned out to be really good. Obviously, you know, you knew it was going to happen, even though I was like, great, I have to teach again. It all worked out. So I was grateful for the lesson and for the opportunity to teach that lesson. That lesson that was most recent was on the Beatitudes, which are basically the higher and holier law that Jesus Christ gives to his people. Blessed are those that mourn, blessed are those that are poor in spirit, blessed are those that are humble, blessed are those that are the peacemakers, stuff like that. And so I actually was able to combine that or connect that to levels of happiness and things that are correlated with happiness and kind of connect the beatitudes and the things that are correlated with happiness according to studies they've done within psychology. Anyway, I was planning on doing that little happiness lesson activity thing way back when I was originally called to be a Sunday school teacher, but then we combined with two other wards and their ward was in charge of Sunday school. And so even though I had prepared a lesson I was not asked to teach, even though I was originally. Anyway, long story short, I had that lesson planned, or that little activity, and never got to do it, but I just saved everything, I put it in the bottom drawer of my nightstand, and then when I was going to teach again on the Beatitudes, I thought, oh my goodness, I can perfectly connect these. Sister Topham actually told me, the definition of Beatitude is great joy. And I thought, oh my goodness, that means I can connect those two things, do that happiness activity. And she said, yeah, you totally can. So I did do that and it was really enjoyable. I really had a good time doing that. And it was fun to know all the answers. I gave out little baggies filled with these little slips of paper with the categories on top, the very low, the moderate, and the high of things that were correlated with happiness. And then there were little slips of paper like income or intelligence or being employed or percent of time having positive effect. Basically means the percent of time you're in a good mood or choosing to do things that you enjoy. Level of leisure activity, number of friends, religiousness, being married, optimism, gratitude, gender, and so on. Anyway, so a list of just little things, and they had to sort them into where they thought they went. If they went to very low, so not correlated with happiness, or the medium, and then very high, which is 0.5. So that was really fun because it took about 25 minutes, and I planned on taking that long. But I went around and kind of chatted with each group, and that was a lot of fun. And then I would point to ones that were wrong, and they were like, what? No way! And I just loved knowing all the answers. I loved being the <laughs> the one with all of the answers. And none of them had access to the right answers, so it worked out really well, and I enjoyed it. Some of them were shocked with some of the things that were correlated with happiness and some of them that weren't. And one of the things that was interesting that I noticed was that the things that were not correlated with happiness genuinely not correlated like at all were things that were out of control income was not correlated with happiness physical attractiveness gender social class race intelligence so there were things that were out of your control and those were all things that were not correlated with happiness and I didn't notice that at all until someone raised their hand and mentioned that 
And I was like, oh my gosh, so true. I didn't even think about that. Those things that aren't correlated with happiness are not in our control. We don't have control over those things. And so I kind of took that to heart and was thinking about that a little bit more and looked at all the other things that weren't correlated to happiness. And then adversely, and it makes sense, the things that were correlated with happiness are things that are under our control. Okay, so I found the list. I just want to hurry and go over them real quick. So it's income, age, intelligence, physical attractiveness, gender, social class, oh, education, and race. Those are the things that aren't correlated with happiness. It's not statistically significant correlation with happiness. And then the moderate things, the things that were moderately correlated with happiness was physical health, being married, religiousness, number of friends, conscientiousness denotes a tendency to be organized and dependable, to show self-discipline, to aim for achievement, and to take obligations to others seriously. And then extroversion, and that is in the moderate, and it is... Defined by the general tendency to experience positive emotions, as well as by traits such as sociable, lively, and active. Those are two things in moderate. And then level of leisure activity is also in there. So your hobbies and how much you do your hobbies and how much time you spend and so on. Then the things that were highly correlated with happiness was self-esteem, which I guess makes sense, right? Optimism, gratitude, Being employed, isn't that interesting, being employed? Being employed is highly correlated with happiness and income is very low or not correlated with happiness. Kind of interesting there. And then a percent of time having positive effect. And positive effect refers to the extent to which an individual subjectively experiences positive moods, such as joy, interest, and alertness. And one of the keywords I want to point out here was subjectively. As in, it's not just because of the experiences happening in your life, but because they are subjective, as in the perception and the perspective of things. Subjectively experiences positive moods such as joy, interest, and alertness. If you look at all the high things that are highly correlated with happiness, self-esteem, optimism, gratitude, being employed, percent of time having positive effect, those are all things that are within your control. Now, are those things easy? Definitely not. They're much easier said than done. But that being said, they're all things that you can work on and control. Can you work on your age? No. A year goes by, (laughs) year after year. Your intelligence, I mean, that's kind of what you were born with, right? That's very low. Physical attractiveness, there's not a ton you can do with that either. Once again, very low. Education, that is something within your control, kind of, but also some people don't have that opportunity. And then income and race and gender obviously you can't decide those things either those are just things that you have no control over but the things in the highly the highly and the moderate categories are things that you can control or you can at least work towards obviously some of them may be a little bit uncomfortable for you for example maybe being extroverted is a little bit harder for you to do but You can work on them and become better at them, and that might lead to more happiness. Now, keep in mind, these are just things that are correlated with happiness. These aren't things that are saying, if you have self-esteem, you will be happy. If you are employed, you will be happy. Obviously, there are a lot of other factors going into this, but in this study, they found that these things are correlated with happiness. So I related these things to the lesson and related them to the Beatitudes, And one of the questions I asked was, how are these things related to the Beatitudes and how are these things related to the gospel? And I had them go one by one, or at least I told them to, we don't know if I actually did it or not, and connect each thing to one of the Beatitudes or connect one or two things to the Beatitudes. And like I said, Beatitudes are, you know, peacemaker, poor in spirit, those who mourn, those are meek, those who are humble and so on. And so each thing you can kind of connect to the Beatitudes. And I basically wrapped it up by saying that when we follow the higher and the holier law, we can live a more happy and fulfilling life. And then I asked these questions, and I'm going to ask them to you too. little side note real quick. Two people that I saw took out their phones and took a picture of the slide, and I felt awesome. So (laughs) if people take a picture of your slide... 
then that means that they were listening and paying attention, right? So anyway, that made me feel really good that they took a picture of the slide and wanted to ponder about it more than just what we talked about at church. So time to ponder. How can you live a happier and more fulfilling life? What can you do to better live the higher and holier law? How can you shine your light? How can you stay strong when things are hard? How can you hold on to hope? How can you be more meek, merciful, poor in spirit, righteous, empathetic? How can you better heed not? How can you be a better peacemaker? And then at the bottom, I had this cool little effect when I pushed the button that said, what are you going to change today? Originally, before I asked all those questions, I had a slide that just had so now what really big in the middle. And the thing is, we've been talking about in lots of my classes and over my college career about learning something and then saying, so now what? What does that mean? How do I apply that to my life? And so I decided to put it right in there. So now what? Because sure, you can talk about lessons and things that you could do to make you more happy or concepts and theories and yada yada, but... If you don't apply it to your life, then it's not really going to do you much good. So I wrote down, so now what? And then I asked some questions. And then I invited them to be quiet and to think and ponder for real and maybe write something in their phone so they can remember or just think about things that they could do and answer some of those questions in their head. And normally I have a really hard time getting them to be quiet. and It's kind of hard. I made a joke one time. I told them to think about it themselves and they started talking. And I made a joke and said... Okay, you guys can talk to your partner now, officially. And a few people laughed and was like, oh, my bad. I invited them to be quiet and think about these things. And they were actually, they listened, they did really good. I was really proud of them. And then I wrapped up and I bore my testimony about how living the higher and holier law, following the Beatitudes and following Christ's example will lead us to more happiness. And that the things that are correlated with happiness are related to the Beatitudes and can be related to them. I just want to give you guys some context. If you would like to read the Beatitudes, because I feel like I've talked about these and then haven't actually explained what they are, it is Matthew 5, 1 through 12, and Luke 6, 20 through 26. Those are some of the scriptures that talk about the Beatitudes. I decided to have someone who's much better than me read them to you. So here they are, and then I'll talk about them afterwards. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The Greek word makaroios translated as blessed, refers predominantly to the final state of complete joy and goodness in the afterlife. Anyway, I know this was kind of out of order and I probably should have started with that first, but what I did is I related the Beatitudes and those things that you just heard 
to the things that were correlated with happiness. And then I bore my testimony that by living the higher and the holier law and by living those beatitudes, we can live a more satisfying and a happier and more fulfilling life. And I know this is true. I know especially with things going on in my life that when I am thinking and pondering about being more merciful or being more humble or being more of a peacemaker or more loving and so on that I just feel better and more content and my heart just feels at peace. And I truly know that he sees our efforts and he sees us trying even when we're not perfect. Matthew five forty eight talks about perfection but the thing about perfection is that it doesn't mean being perfect in earth's terms or definition it means being complete and whole and I really loved getting to know myself a little bit better and the things that matter to me and kind of change my priorities so that the things that matter to me are the ones that will make life more successful and more satisfying And I found it to be true, honestly. It's been really wonderful in my life. So the word of the day today is vacillate, and it is a verb, and it means to alternate or waver between different opinions or actions. Be indecisive. First of all, I just want to say that I love finding words and then being able to find a way to connect them to whatever I'm talking about, (laughs) because I feel like it's not easy all the time. And then I just kind of grab a word, and I'm like, I'll connect it. It's fine. But anyway, how I want to connect the word today, vacillate, is to say that I don't want to vacillate with my beliefs. I don't want to waver and be indecisive. I want to be strong and I want to be firm. And I would encourage you guys to do the same. What in your life can you work on to be more sure of yourself or to be more more dedicated or more unwavering? I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> To not waver as much and to be strong because when you know who you are, life is different. It's better. It's more satisfying and it is more purposeful and it's meaningful. One of my favorite things about where I am in my life is that I feel like I know who I am and what matters to me. And so when people in college or when people that I know say certain things or try to teach a certain way, I can recognize that... Maybe what they are saying doesn't align with what I believe, but I'm okay with that. And I don't need to understand exactly where they're coming from. As long as I respect them and respect what they believe, that I don't really need to automatically believe what they teach. As a young kid, I had a hard time not believing everything that adults said. My thought process was, well, they're an adult. They know, right? You know, they have all the answers. They know what's best. But I remember very specifically, and maybe I've told the story before, so I apologize if I've told it already, but I remember very specifically in fifth grade, my teacher was telling us about how to reply politely to when people ask how we're doing. And she said, the most polite thing you can do is say, fine, thank you. And that bugged me so much because I was like, if I ask someone how they're doing and they say, fine, they are not fine. They are not okay. (laughs) Continue on and get to know what is going on because fine is not good. (laughs) Especially if you talk to most women out there, fine is not good. It's just not. What I wanted to say with this is I was bothered by it, but I was like, but she's my teacher. She knows, right? She knows what's right. She knows what's wrong. And then maybe I should believe her. But I kept questioning this and I kept thinking, no, I just can't. I can't do that. And so I never actually ended up saying, fine, thank you, when people asked me how I was doing. But I really struggled with that. Like, she knows, right? She's my teacher. Now that I know that these teachers and these professors are just human beings with their own thoughts and beliefs and opinions, even though they have doctorates, doesn't mean that they have to be something that I believe exactly the same way, too. I can have my own beliefs and my own thoughts and my own values different from theirs. And I don't have to believe every single thing they say because, once again, they're just a human being. And I honestly think that's the same with people in church. You know, when we give talks, we're just human beings giving talks. 
No one gave them the ultimate authority and to say every single right thing. We're just human beings, just like anyone else. We're just any other member. And just because someone gives a talk in church doesn't mean that what they say is exactly what goes. And learning this has been really helpful in my life because when someone says something in church that I'm like, what? That makes no sense. I can just remember that they're just a human being with their own thoughts, feelings, and values. And I'm my own being with thoughts, feelings, and values. I would encourage you guys to really focus and ponder about what you believe. And if it's not what I believe, that's okay. Think about what you believe. And don't vacillate between what you believe and what someone else may believe. Don't waver. Be strong. I am so grateful to have this opportunity to tell you about things that are correlated with happiness. And for me personally, what's correlated the most with happiness is my spirituality and my relationship with Heavenly Father and with the Savior. I know I've said this before, I really do, but I don't know how much I'll ever really go into my feelings with the Savior and my journey with that, but I had a really, really, really hard time with Him and accepting him and accepting his sacrifice and accepting his atonement and accepting his love because I just, I don't know, I had so many conflicting feelings about it. But over the last year, and especially at FSY, is when things changed and when they shifted. And when I finally came to that wonderful feeling of gratitude and love, and I didn't experience that. I didn't I didn't have that before. And so I can say with all my heart that I really truly do know that having a strong relationship with him leads to a better life. And I didn't think that before. And I do now. So if you're at where I was and you're not sure, it's okay. It's really okay. It's honestly amazing that you can recognize that that is something that is hard for you because that means you're self-aware. I would encourage you not to give up on that, not to give up on your relationship with him and not to give up on you and the values and things that you believe because when you finally come to that understanding and that strong belief of standing up for what you believe in, it's just better. Life is just better. So I want to close by saying that the Beatitudes... Being merciful, being a peacemaker, being poor in spirit, being a light to others and shining your light. All of those things will make a better and more satisfying life. Definitely not easy, but easier. And I know that's true. And I guess I've never ever closed a podcast by closing it this way, but I'm going to today. So I know these things are true. I really do. And if you ever have any questions, come ask me because I'd love to talk about it. And I say these things in the name of my son, Jesus Christ, amen. And once again, I know I've never done that before, but (laughs) why not start, right? Thank you guys so much for listening. Find meaning, satisfaction, and joy from the journey. I'm Kyra, and this is Imperfectly Broken, the podcast. (laughs) 